Hello, this is Nathan Stoop with Whisper. And uh, today we're gonna have a guest uh, on with us. Uh, we're gonna talk about customer service. And before we get into that and I introduce the guests, I, I wanna always remind everybody, uh, you define success. Uh, if you define your success, you will always be successful. You know, that doesn't mean settle, right? But that means to find success for you. What does that really mean? And there'll always be somebody that has a bigger house, more cars, um, but you define success and, and you'll always be successful. And uh, this guest today, uh, someone I've, I've known for actually a long time, uh, love, love her to bits. She's awesome to, uh, to, to talk with and, and she's doing amazing, amazing things. And she uh, is somebody who early on helped us with uh, some of our customer service and customer experience. And uh, with that, I'd love to, to bring on Dawn and have her, as you guys probably know by now, you, you know me well enough, I hate doing introductions because I can't read the paper to <laughs> list off all the things. So I, I love to have my speakers do their own introductions. So Dawn, why, why don't you tell the world, welcome to the, the show, and why don't you tell the world a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Nathan. You guys were one of my first clients, and I remember um, there were five, like there were five in a room. And how many employees do you have, Nathan? Oh, we got uh, 138. And if you wait a week, yeah. it'll probably be like 140. <laughs> 145. <laughs> <laughs> You've grown a little bit, just a little bit in all those years. Um, I am the CEO of Customer Service and Beyond. And as you can see on the screen, I've written a book, Customer Service and Beyond. It's all about the wow. Uh, 19 years, I've been a trainer. Um, in addition, some people might know me as the director of the Chamber of Commerce, Troy Maryville St. Jacob Marine Chamber of Commerce. And on June 6th, I celebrated 20 years. And in the chamber industry, trust me, Nathan, that's like 140 years or something. Um, <laughs> People burn out, and I know why. It's odd hours, but I've met some amazing people, including yourself, and um, love love life, love what I do because, you know, you shouldn't do a job you don't love, and you and I both probably could say we absolutely love our jobs. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're a, you're an overnight success story, 19 years in the making, right? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, wow, it's so amazing what she does, you know? <laughs> That's it, yeah. So, Many yeah, people so, don't know me know, as that, though. Sorry. Go ahead. Right, right. No, you're right. You're right. And, you know, it's interesting. You know, when we say customer service today, I, I think it's people are more aware of it, right? People are yes. more aware that customer service is what's super important. I know we at Whisper feel that it's the only thing that sets us apart. Um, but 19 years ago, I, I mean, were you climbing up, the, you know, a hill trying to convince people? Talk a little bit about how you how you came to the realization that customer service is where you wanted to kind of focus on. Well, I started my business in 2001 because I took the job at the chamber in 2000 with a 55% pay cut. And um, we were just moving into a house and quadrupling our house payment. So I had to figure out how we're going to pay for that. So um, in 1994, I started post-it notes and I would put things like quick trip or a grocery store story. And I had this box. So decided in 2008 to write a book. So the book's on the front there. And um, I, I would tell you that 19 years ago, the difference in customer service is people are more aware, but you have that opportunity to be the wow. So I have a class called What Is Your Wow? And mm -hmm. a wow to me would be um, my girlfriend who many years ago, you'll see how it ages here, many years ago opened a floral business and her delivery person would take a Polaroid camera. Yep, that's how old it is. And take wow. two pictures. And she would put one picture with a handwritten note to the person who bought the flowers. We thought you'd enjoy seeing what they look like. And then also sent one to the person who received the flowers. We thought you would like to see reaction. Included her business card in both. And guess what happened? She went to five locations almost immediately because people understood that she really cared about the customer. And, you know, as I go through my day, you can imagine I'm places and I uh, don't get wow service and I see missed opportunities. And, but really for me, I want companies who are good, who want to be great because companies who are crappy, who want to be mediocre are never going to get it. So that's why I love working with my Whisper staff. Um, you guys get it. I mean, every single one of you get it. Yeah. Well, well thanks for that. We, we try. You know, it, it takes effort, right? It, it takes it effort. And I, I think I remember reading your book when you first when it first came out and I, I listened to it on, on CD and everything. And I, I have to say, um, you have ruined me um, because <laughs> you're your secret shopper. Right. So so yeah. your secret shopper, your stories. I can't walk into a store. I can't have an interaction with a company and not in my mind secret shop them and be like, well, if I was a secret shopper, this is what I would have said or done. And 
So mm -hmm. talk about something you have, maybe from your book or just a story of, of when you're a secret shopper, which is you were hired by the a company owner or a manager to go in and pretend to be a customer and then give them feedback. What, what's some of the funniest things you've kind of run into or seen? Well, my poor husband um, gets to go with me a lot of times. And we were out to dinner one night and Ted said, my husband said, do I have to go to the restroom? And I said, I don't know. Do you have to go to the restroom? And he said, no, are we secret shopping? Do I have to go to the restroom? I said, no, we're not secret <laughs> shopping. <laughs> because, um, you know, I can't go in the men's restroom. So, um, you know, I, I've uh, changed it to call it the customer experience. Okay. Because secret okay. shopping, um, people were taking it as, um, man, she's going to find everything wrong. And the truth is that I'm completely the opposite. I find all of the great things. And then I find some areas where people need improvement. So I never come in with, oh, my gosh these are the 27 things you could change. I come in with, man, you wowed me on these three things. In fact, if you wow me in a secret shop moment, um, I will reward you with a book after I'm finished um, at the oh. training when I do the training. So, but I'll read, I'll read my favorite story. So if anybody is listening and they've seen me, there is no doubt that they've heard the story. Um, <laughs> but it's the story that started it all in the Tuesday before Thanksgiving in 1994. It's called Be in the Moment. It's very short. Of all of the in-the-moment examples that I have, this may be by far the best. I was checking out at a local grocery store, piling my groceries onto the conveyor belt. All 54 items, totaling $81.15, were scanned and bagged by the checker. I processed my debit card and then realized up until that moment, the checker had made zero conversation with me. There was no hello, no how are you, no these brownies look good, nothing. In fact, no one in the store had acknowledged me at all. I had encountered several store employees without any notice whatsoever. After I processed my debit card, I turned to the checker and said, aren't you even going to say thank you he tore off the receipt handed it to me and said it's on the bottom of your receipt and if you continue with that story um the bagger and the checker continued to chat with each other oh, and yeah. i left i called my mom and i said i know what i want to do i want to help people um customer service but if you think of that first job you had nobody trained you on how to be kind how to uh, count change whatever so i've actually created a um a whole entire course on your first job and I'm getting ready to release that. So I'm pretty excited oh, about nice. that. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think you mentioned something that's uh, if we're allowed to have pet peeves is one of my pet peeves is when I go into a store and I need help with something and there's two attendants talking to each other, they complete their conversation before they help me. And I'm just kind of standing there like, excuse me. And they kind of glance at you and then they finish their conversation and then they come back and I'm thinking, Holy cow. I mean, that that's like, no, 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 that you can't have that. But you're right. Some people don't set those expectations. They, they, they don't train them as to what's expected. Uh, so that's tough. And that example is great because it won't change until the two parties involved, the two employees come to terms outside of that moment to say, look, when someone's within 10 feet, even if you're in the middle of a conversation, we stop until the entire team understands that that's never going to change. So, you know, I feel like people need to get customer service training. In fact, I've also written a curriculum for a local college to do a customer service class as, I think it should be a requirement, but it'll be an elective, um, <laughs> an entire course for a semester because these poor kids get out of college and trust me, we have chamber interns and trust me, they need yeah. some help and, and you can't blame them. I mean, nobody's taught them. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And it, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I used to tell my, my guys, you know, when we first had installers, like, you know, pretend that the customer's house is your house. Treat it like your house. And then I've been to a couple of my guys' houses. I'm like, no, 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 no. Pretend like it's your grandma's house, okay? You know, we, we have to <laughs> frame it up for them as to what, what's expected and what they should do. And I know another thing for me is we, we don't have a lot of walk-in traffic at our office, um, but I would much rather hear from a customer, yes, I'm being helped. Thank you for asking the 10th time, right? Yes. If a customer is standing there and you walk by as an employee, I don't care if you're the janitor or the CEO or anybody in between, you should say, oh, are you being helped? Um, mm -hmm. Because the worst thing you could do is walk by like you're too busy and the customer's like, wow, I haven't even talked to anybody. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'd rather them say, no, no, I'm being helped. It's, it's okay. It's okay. So it, it's so hard to teach some of that, but it's some, it's kind of common sense, but it really isn't common sense because mm -hmm. a lot of people just don't even think about it. Right. That is correct. And the more stories that I tell outside of their industry and then bring that story into their industry, that's the only way they get it. Because if I just keep the stories 
in their industry. They can't see them because they're in their industry. Um, so often I, if I, I have a lot of financial institutions, but 93 Illinois libraries I've trained, 93 Illinois uh-huh. libraries. So uh-huh. I don't use library stories. I use grocery store stories to get them in the moment and thinking about it. And then boom, we're back at when they say, well, I can't believe that checker didn't say thank you. I say, well, how about that library? And then they go, whoa, oh. <laughs> she got us. <laughs> but I'm not trying to trick them. Um, but I want to tell my favorite whisper story. Can I do that? Yeah, yeah, uh, please. Early on, early, you guys were probably three years in business. Mm -hmm. Um, We had it at home and we had a bad storm. And I had um, an item that was due and had to get out. It was a newsletter and had to get out. And I called Whisper and we were talking and the gentleman said to me, well, I can just come by on my way home. And I'm like, come by. He came by and fixed it on his way home. And I never forgot that story. And I do tell that story a lot. Because try going to a big company, like I'm not going to name them, they're not going to do that. And I think today, I know today still, it's that same personal service that you guys give. Yeah, and I, I think that it's interesting you bring up that as a story because as we grow, you know, we're, we're hiring five to ten people yeah. a week now and we're growing across multiple states. And I, I sleep very well at night, um, but what really I, I think about a lot is how do we grow large without growing large, right? Yeah. I, I don't want to have a customer service experience that's horrible because my employees don't want to be there anyway. I, I, and it's all those little things. It's the little things we have to put together. And we're trying to make it where we stay more local, right? Our, our local offices, you know, in your exact example, if, if we had had a corporate mentality in a call center, you would have called in and they would have been like, awesome. The first day available is Monday. We'll be out there at eight o'clock in the morning. You're like, but it's due tonight. And and mm-hmm. we, we want it to be more like, oh, I know Dawn. I'm going to run into her at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. So I better get it fixed now, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and that's what we want. And that's what we need as opposed to being super efficient and having everything managed from a central location and, and then just dispatching people. So I think that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a great example of how WISP and your general small business can can stand out because people have that relationship with their, their customers more so um, than the big companies do. Yeah, it's about culture. I love the culture at Whisper. I love coming in there. Um, you know what else I love? I love that I call and I get a real person. Mm. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I, you have the backdoor number, and I remember I was using it one time, and I said, Nathan, I can't believe you don't have live people. And you said, well, live people answer. I was calling their own number, so I had to yeah. be back up and go. <laughs> that was my bad. But oh, I get a real person. I love that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd love to get rid of the IVR altogether. And just make it where when you call us, it, it, it you don't even have to press one for anything. I, I know why we have it right now. And that as we get larger, we're hoping to have the resources to make it where it, it's just, it's a live person. You're right. It's so important. Yes. And, and I know it costs more for us to do it, but it's, it's the right thing to do. It's the way we, we need to be done. It is. So, yeah. So I, I remember you and I have been on a tower together. <laughs> we, we've done company <laughs> meetings when, in our back office. I remember our warehouse where we had the tin roof where, it was pouring down rain and, and you had to stop talking because nobody could hear you. Uh, you know, we've done all these things. It's, it's been, it's been a, a wild ride uh, with yeah, that. And I, yeah, I, I love, talk, talk a little bit about that renter versus owner. I, I know I, I mentioned this in one of my other broadcasts that I did and, and I, I gave you credit because that's where I got it from. But, but talk a little bit about that. I just, I think it's such an interesting concept and it's a, it's a neat story that no matter who you work for, what you do, it, it easily separates out, you know, how you should think about your, your role as a, as an employee at a company. When I train, the number one thing people remember is the story that I told. And the number two thing is the renter and the owner. I can see someone 10 years later, honestly, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'll never forget the renter versus owner. So be a, be an owner of your job, not a renter. So an owner of their job is someone who really cares about the company, about their coworkers. They pick up the trash when they come to work. They come to work every day. They don't call off sick. So a renter is the person who sits in the parking lot until 10 seconds before they have to be in and they barely get there. And they, you know, with uh, being there at 9, 10 and they go home at five o'clock, they say, um, 
seven hours and 50 minutes and I get to go home and you know, gosh, that's terrible. Like if I had to do that, I would like, it would be terrible. So be an owner of your job, not a renter, be an owner of your life, not a renter, be an owner of your customer service, not a renter. So I have all of those broken down. Um, be an owner of your life, not a renter is a lot of, um, you know, what can you do? You can change how you act and react, but you can't change people. And so sometimes people get frustrated. I'm like, you know, you only can frustrate yourself. And (laughs) so that's been pretty effective, but the owners, you know, and hiring the hiring process, the culture, it all comes into that. If you have a renter, people say, can I change them? And I said, no, you can't change people, but you can (laughs) change um, what your expectations are of them. You can change documentation. Um, but you know what? An owner can go to a renter if there's a change, but hopefully a good manager is a, an owner for heaven's sakes. I, I had a client who actually I meet with them next week, 90% renters. And I, when I asked him, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And guess who's in there? The leader. And so that's going to be a, a tough one for me, but I, you know, we're going to make it work. But can you imagine supervising Nathan 90% renters? No. You would have never no. hired them. You would have never no. hired them. Mm-mm. No. No. So that's really the concept of, um, and I, people quote it a lot and I feel like I need to like, I don't know, patent it or something because I've never <laughs> heard it before and I've yeah. heard it for a long time. So maybe we'll yeah. have to work on patent and that, but my next book is customers. I mean, my next book is, um, change your attitude, change your underwear. Um, ah, but okay. I really think then I'll have a string of be an owner of your job, be, you know, and go on with yeah. that because it's just very effective. When people think in terms of that, it's very effective. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So is it too early for you to talk a little bit about your your new book, The, the Change Your Attitude, Change Your Underwear? You, can you give us a little uh, sneak peek as to what that's going to look like? I can. Actually, I've written some, I, it's kind of, I've done it backwards. I've uh, made some snippet um, interviews. I have made, written some snippet pieces and now it's just a matter of putting it together. So I have to get a ghostwriter because my mind goes 80 different directions, a little ADHD <laughs> there, and I um, can't put things in order. So I just write the story and then that's what they did in my first book. Um, but I really think attitude is your choice and right. you have to believe that because it is. And um, I, in fact, I did a post yesterday on social media about how people put, maybe they put, you know, uh, if you have children running in the street, I'm going to, you need to come get them. And instead of putting that, what I suggest is, um, you know, I noticed some kids today. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to, I'm going to work really hard today on making sure my kids are not running around and I'm going to drive slow. So you put yourself in owning it and doing it and then encouraging, cause just by putting, you know, move your kids, that's not going to happen. That's probably a, a bad example, but Um, it, your attitude really is about you and you have the power to change it and you have the power of what you're thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think a a book that I've, I've read is uh, down those lines is I read it just recently, two weeks ago called change your questions, change your life. And it, and it talks about moving, moving from judger, right? Where you judge people and you make up Mm -hmm. stories as to why they're doing what they're doing, uh, to, to learner. Right of what, what what's the situation? How can I ask more questions and everything? And I, I love that you're writing books on, on that. I was I was going back and um, looking at some old presentations. I was looking for something and it came up and I I clicked on one of my very very first presentations I did to Whisper as a company. Right, I think we had 17 employees, and it was attitude, and it was all about attitude and how you change. You know, you decide your attitude. It, nobody nobody nobody's holding a gun to your head that says you have to respond this way. And the story I like to look at that is if if you were driving down the highway and someone cut you off and, mm-hmm. and, and you're, you, you would race up to them, flick them off and, and scream and shout at them. And you say, you made me do this, right? But if you were driving in a bar, bad part of town and somebody does the same thing, you just keep driving. So it's like, wait a minute, nobody made you act the way you do. And it's just so many people have that victim mentality, like, right? They don't take that ownership. And, and I love that you've expanded the renter versus owner from more just employee to, to your life in general. If, if, we, if we take ownership of how our life is going, oh, the sky's the limit as to what you can do. But if you say, oh, well, this person's doing this and they're making me do this and they're making me do that, that, that just doesn't go anywhere, right? It just doesn't go anywhere. At least for me, it doesn't. 
And if you keep driving and drive that same scenario and you're driving, you're really angry and you're about ready to flip him off and you see it's Uncle Joe, you go, yeah. oh, it's Uncle Joe. How's Mary doing? I do have a class called Judging Doesn't Look Good on You, and it's completely about judgment. And it's about um, and it's interesting because I will tell you that I've done it oh, at least a couple dozen times. And without exception, I will get people who cry in the mm. in the training because of the examples that I use and how people are treated. And people leave with a, man, it's emotional. It's a very emotional, it's emotional because the stories are very, like when I tell them, I tell them I'm stepping outside of the trainer, I'm going to be this person. And it's so sad. And we've all been judged and we've all judged. It's a matter Mm -hmm. of putting in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's always interesting that, you know, we judge others based on their actions and we judge ourselves based on our intentions. Exactly. Right. And it's like, right. whoa, 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 whoa. We're giving ourselves a complete pass because you intended to do this and you intended to do that. And you justify why you didn't, didn't do it. But then when we see others, we judge them based on their actions. And that's not, that's not right either. We have to kind of step back and say, oh, okay, hold on. Let's, let's learn about what's going on. Let's understand. So, did they do well, it on purpose? If yeah. you ask yourself, did they do it on purpose? And your answer is no then you move on. If it's yes, then that's a different conversation. But if it's no, you move on. And you think about instead of judging them, what you could do better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think if we tie that all back around to this customer service, you know, having those employees that aren't judges, that that see things in a different perspective, allows them to feel very comfortable in their skin with who they are and what they're doing. And then also allows them to take some of that positive criticism that you have to give back, right? Of, hey, this is where you could improve. This is what, what's going on. So I, I think it's definitely a, a, a good good kind of tie that back in. And kind of to wrap up a little bit, are there like three takeaways that you might have that, uh, you know, something for techniques to help co- companies uh, have better customer service? I think um, if you have a competitor that you believe has better service, there is nothing wrong with visiting that company and I don't say secret shopper, but just to review what are they doing better. So right now, if you're a restaurant and you're getting ready to reopen and you've heard a couple of restaurants that are doing it right, go learn from them. I mean, obviously don't tell them, but you just want to learn from them. Also make sure if you're the leader that in every second you realize that your staff is watching you. So if all of a sudden your staff are late um, and they weren't before, make sure you look at your time clock to make sure that that you're on time because you are setting yeah. the example and then decide what is your wow for your company. So um, I would say our wow as a chamber is probably handwritten notes. And I can tell you, that's what I was doing when you called is handwritten cards. So we do about wow. 20 cards a week handwritten. So it could be sympathy. In fact, I just learned of a sympathy today that I, I will send out, but we care about our uh, members and we want to make sure that they know that we care at a different level of just paying your dues. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I, so your, your handwritten notes, that must've been where we got it. We, we have, we do handwritten notes as well, where uh, we have somebody in the company that, Oh, if you came across, you know, you learn of a customer that had a death in the family or their dog died or, or something like that, then uh, we, we send them handwritten notes just as a, Hey, we're thinking about you uh, and everything. And it, it, it goes a long way, right? It's a little bit of a pick me up, uh, an unexpected. Yeah. Um, People will, you'll see them a year later and they'll go, Oh my gosh, I got that letter. What is your wow? What's whispers? Wow. Well? Yeah, so Whispers Wow, and we kind of tie it with our 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 niche and, and what we do. Our mission is, you know, creating opportunities that make a difference. Um, and it, it's not internet, right? I mean, we provide customer service; it comes in the form of an internet. But really, we're in business to create those opportunities, whether it be for our customers to stay connected, or whether it be for our employees uh, that that came up through the ranks or new ones we hire, or whatever. That's that's what we're in business for, and that's what we need to be focusing on as we wow the customer every time. And and our our next thing we're doing is we have a, a niche which is our human touch, you know, internet with a human touch, uh, because everybody wants to go automated. Everybody wants to go, you know, don't talk to a live person. We can help people more. And we're like, no, 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 no. What does it mean to have internet with a human touch? What are we going to do? And we're literally going to take every role, and they're going to have to answer what does that mean what's what's different with that and how do how do we do those things so i think it's kind of a it's a it's an interesting way for us to drive home what we're ultimately trying to do is just completely provide such good service to the customer that a competitor comes into town and they're like "Eh, i'm not even interested i'm never going to leave because it's amazing 
Uh, that's what we're trying to do. And we want customers that love us. Uh, not not people, just like us. Yeah. Yeah. We love you. I'm just going to say, we love you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> hey, do there, you see one, how much we one love One down. You? <laughs> hey, there we I go. I like your shirt. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people ask me about it, but um, I would say that people, the other thing is that you can't have amazing service if you don't have goals and you don't set standards. So the other thing I do is hire companies with customer service standards, and I know you have them in your company, but I would encourage people to um, really just take a look at their customer service and know that, you know, in the end, financially, it brings in more money when it's amazing. Yeah. And we, we've always had that feeling that you know, treat the customer really, really well, do amazing by them, the money will come, right? I, that, that isn't our driving factor. It's what's no. right for the customer. What, what do we need to do? In fact, we, we've had times where we've, um, you know, had a billing dispute with the customer. And, and I had a billing dispute with one of the large providers we won't mention. And, and it was like nine months and 15 calls later, I finally got my $60 back. And I, did I need it? No, but it was the principal effect, right? I mean, it was clearly they admitted they, they had overcharged me. They billed me twice for one month. You know, whereas we take the stance of, oh, we're going to refund your money first, and then we'll figure out, you know, who made the mistake, why was it done, what do we need to do? And, and that's just, it's a slight change in what we're doing, but it, it's something because we trust our employees and we trust our customers. Uh, whereas as you get bigger, I can see where they, they, they tend to navigate more towards the 1% and punish the 99% of the other customers mm -hmm. that don't take advantage of you. So, yeah, yeah, well, that's great. So, so people want to learn more about what you do and everything. How do, how do they get a hold of you? How do they how do they find you? And and what does that look like? Well, uh, dawnmichelle.com will get them to customer service and beyond. Um, customer service and beyond.com will take them to the same um, place. And they can see funny videos. My cup. Uh, so I have a, here's my book. And then I also have merchandise on there. So here's my change your attitude, change your underwear cup. And I did several of those small short snippets and, they're pretty funny. They're kind of weird. I'm, I just have a very strange sense of humor. I also have all my classes listed. Um, uh, they could follow me on Facebook. I do a lot of posting on Facebook. And the one thing that you'll find about any of my social media, including the chamber, is I will never, ever share anything negative, ever. And people go, well, how do you do that? I go, well, I type and I don't share anything negative because I <laughs> feel like there's enough out there. But I just want to say personally, from a personal point of view, I look up to you so much as a leader and I love right. your book list and I have your book list from the last time you spoke and you've spoken several times for the chamber and people walk away, but you know, there's nothing better than having a great leader and you have just wowed me for a very, very long time. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's an interesting evolution. We mentioned at the beginning, you know, 19 year, uh, overnight success story and and my evolution <laughs> as a leader has has grown and there's no way the CEO that I was 17 years ago would be able to run the company we have now no way no way because you have to grow you have to learn and do things like this and really think about customer service or think about how to how to move your business along so yeah well it's been really great to have you uh, thank you so much for coming on I, I do have a couple books I, I put up here um, that I think these are some great books uh, yeah. about customer service um, Donna put yours in the middle, so that's good. Um, but uh, all <laughs> these Hagen. other ones are really good. The the delight your customer, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's it's awesome. It's such a good book. The way he steps it out and and what what's expected and and everything like that. So I, I think those these are all great books. And thank you so much for everybody who tuned in. And uh, look forward to Don seeing you at a, the next chamber event or the next speaking thing we get to do. It's been uh, great having you on. Thank you so much. Great to you, Nathan. Have a great day.